I don't worry about me. Like I'm chilling. Like I have no hesitation at all. And, and that lying. I fear is not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> that is not my problem. Honestly, I would tell them that they should seek professional help. I know she hated her. Hey guys, welcome back to Full Coverage, your favorite podcast with your co-hosts to the stars. <laughs> oh, that's a new one. <laughs> I, always, I want to come up with a new one every single time. <laughs> the co-host to the, the stars. The the stars. <laughs> Manny MUA and... Marley. And we are here to bring you the hot, the tea, the, the goss, goss the goss. The goss, the goss. Um, we have a lot happening today, okay? There's a lot happening in, like, in the world, though. There's like too many to, hot like, topics, media. honestly. I need everybody to calm down. It's a lot of hot tops. It's a lot of hot tops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I love a hot top. The girls have been acting up is the problem. Honestly, they have been. They have been. We have a lot. We have a lot. We have like the Blake Lively okay. situation with uh, The Last of Us. Love is Blind this Reunion. Is oh, uh, it ends no, with us. it ends with us. It ends with us. Yes. Love is Blind Reunion. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. I have a lot to say about that. Yeah. Um, we have... Uh, Alyssa and Tana. Oh, my God. It's continuing their battle. Um, the saga continues. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. But that's a lot. Like, they're all big topics. So, we're going to be diving in. But first... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Peaks, peaks and pits. Peaks, peaks, and pits. Peaks and pits. Hey. Peaks and and pits. Pits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cake. hyper. And candy. <laughs> cake, cake, cake. Okay, and wanna candy. give us a yeah, little I'll give a us, morsel? I'll give us some I'll give you a morsel. <laughs> Thank you so much to ZocDoc for sponsoring this portion of Full Coverage. You guys, ZocDoc is an amazing free app and website where you can search and compare high quality in-network doctors, choose the right one for your needs, and click to instantly book an appointment. You guys, they have over 100,000 healthcare providers across every specialty from mental health to dental health to mm. eye care to skin mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and truly so much more. It's truly incredible. I swear, ZocDoc is literally my, our favorite, my favorite part that we have here. It's absolutely incredible. So stop putting off those doctor appointments and go to ZocDoc.com slash full to find and instantly book a top rated doctor today that's zocdoc dot com slash full zogtalk dot com slash full Thank you to Shopify for sponsoring this portion of full coverage. Shopify is a global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Me and Laura are huge fans of Shopify. We both use it for our businesses, Lunar Beauty and Minimum LA. And honestly, it truly is like the easiest onboarding platform there is. So you guys can sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash full coverage. That's all lowercase. That's one month for just $1 at shopify.com slash full coverage. That's shopify.com slash full coverage um so this weekend we went to monterey with porsche super excited Sickening. they actually invited me to go do this while i was on the last trip with them and i was like i'm so down so they were like do you want to fly to monterey because monterey is just like up north california it's yes. like an hour and a half flight it's mm -hmm. really close um or you can drive and we'll give you like a brand new 911 Targa. And I was like, I'm going to drive. I love Send it. Send me the car. I love uh, that. They say it had like 200 miles on it. <laughs> it's like a br up. brand spanking new car. I was like, damn, like, they were like, you're signing paperwork. You can't hit curves. You can't. I was like, don't get, <gasps> and don't get crazy. And don't hit curves. Yeah. Don't that already, hit and you're curves. Like, no, I, I ain't even worried about it. I, the thing <laughs> is, other people are not confident. I am a very confident driver. 100%. Other people are not confident in me driving. But, like, I don't worry about me. Like, I'm chilling. Like, I have no hesitation at all. I'm like, baby, give me the keys to the car. Like, there's literally no problem. It's other people. That are they, scared. Yes, that are scared. That fear for and their that life. I fear is not my problem. <laughs> that is not my problem. So um yeah, we drove up there. It was like a six hour drive. I drove three hours. Tyler drove three hours and it was really fun. So they called told me a cool story and I thought I'd tell the podcast. And by the way, I'm as uh, the more I hang out with Portia, the more I understand like that they have a an, a, a, a fan base that's like like a Disney adult fan base. Stop it. Yes. I thought like, you were gonna say they people, have ungodly money. They do have that too. <laughs> they also <laughs> have ungodly <laughs> money. But they have this fan base, and I guess I didn't realize how deep the Porsche fan base runs. Mm -hmm. like, I, didn't know, I, didn't know, I, I mean, that. I've been a huge fan forever. I've always wanted one, like, my whole life. My first luxury car I could get my hands on was mm -hmm. a Porsche. Like, I've always been a huge fan, but that's just because, like, I personally love them. Well, yeah. apparently I've never had an original thought because everybody else is too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so... Anyways, I told this really cute story and I thought I would share it for the podcast because I was like, oh my God, this is sweet. So I don't know if you guys saw the movie Cars by Pixar. Love. love. One of my faves, honestly, from Pixar. So the love interest in Cars is a 911 Carrera Porsche. That's the car I drive. Hi. 
Um, so it's a 9-11. So we were like on the trip and we're like, so I can't remember. It may have been Alicia. Somebody said, whoa, hold on. The, the car in cars is a Porsche. Did you guys pay to make that happen? Or was that advertisement? And they were like, so funny. It's ac that actually wasn't um, advertisement. And like, we didn't pay. It was um, the creator and like the people, illustrators were such huge Porsche fans. They like asked, could we make the character a Porsche? And we loved it. So they did. Her name's Sally Carrera, um, and she's a blue Porsche. So, so, so cool. I actually met the guy who created her, and I met the Stop guy it. who drew her, who also created and drew Buzz Lightyear and every other Pixar character you love. I talked to these people because they're such Porsche fans. They were and there they the for thing. the car show. Yeah, they were the thing. It was just so cool. So anyway, so every God. single year, Porsche does one. I'm butchering the name. It's called Sondermunch or whatever. It's oh. German, and they mm -hmm. say it with a heavy accent, and it's pronounced completely different, so don't quote me. But what that means is like one wish, special wish, depending on what country you're on. And they pick someone in their lottery. I don't know how they pick them. And they get to create every year a one-of-one -one Porsche custom from scratch. Meaning wow. they will make a custom rim, custom paint that doesn't mm -hmm. even exist for their cars, mm -hmm. right? One on one. We got to see the one this year be unveiled, which was so cool. I'll show it to you. Uh -huh. But um, one year they had the idea. They were like, what if we make the Sonder Munch? I'm mispronouncing that, but uh, Sally Carrera. <gasps> we physically create the car that was in the, the in the movie. Mm -hmm. And then we auction it off at the car auction in Monterey. So they were like, that's our idea. Genius. So um, the, actually the illustrator of Sally Carrera helped create it to make sure it was perfect, custom rims, like everything identical. So it's the actual Pixar cars. And then they wanted to auction it off. So the whole Porsche team, this is just like such a huge deal for them. You know, they're all gathered around and they're like, oh my God, I wonder if it'll get up to 200,000. Like, I wonder if it'll even hit 300,000. Like, like money earned. Like they, yeah, um, like uh, for the auction Got for it. the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like money earned on yes. the car like whoever buys it for yep and they were i mean they were like trembling because this was such a huge thing such a huge project they worked so hard on and like like mm -hmm. they were just like on a prayer like i hope this does good what we want it to do and yeah it was no the problem is they don't understand disney adults that's and the they're problem a, they're a sick breed they are a sick, they're breed, a sick breed baby i love disney but disney adult disney is different do you want to know how much this Fucking Sally Carrera. A million dollars. More. More? They said that they wanted to hit 200,000 and I said a million. And the story is crazy. It is the highest auction car at the Monterey car show ever, ever in history. 3.3 million dollars they said the whole team was crying like they thought Bro, they were what? praying for it to get to 300,000. 3.3 million dollars is what this car went for. Guess what they decided to do? Make another. Give all the money to charity. I know. I was like, this is the sweetest story. They gave all story. the money to charity? They gave all the money to charity. And, like, the creator of Sally Carrera and the Disney people were all in on, like, making this dream happen. It was just, like, mm -hmm. such a cool story that they did that. And I love this company so much. And I just love That's them more for really it. That's so. really freaking cool. Yeah. Isn't that You inspire so me to get a Porsche. Dude, it's a you hefty car payment. Me. I'm telling you, you so I'm sure it. you're inspiring the dolls too. You're yeah. inspiring the girls, the full fam. Listen. Your, your Instagram, like everything looks so fucking sick. You are like, they are lucky to have you. Because oh. I feel like they truly, like Thank you make you. them look so beautiful as if they weren't already, but you make it more, I don't know, like more personal the in a crazy way. Th thank you the crazy thing is i'm not a car person i'm like a porsche person you know what totally, i mean totally, like totally. i don't go around like obsessing totally, over cars i'm more so obsessed over porsches my goal one day is to have um the a vintage 911 turbo which mm -hmm. maybe from like 1995 1996 somewhere in there white mm -hmm. black rims i'm very Ooh. specific yeah. but i saw them i watched a car auction which is fascinating to watch people blow six I've digits like this no just like that i want it yes i was like oh don't scratch your head in here honey <laughs> but do um, not scratch do your not head, scratch your do head, do head not in sneeze in here bitch but i was like damn i was watching them because they had a lot of the vintage porsches going and they were like hitting two hundred thousand. i was like ooh, damn that's ooh. rough i know it was a lot so that's i was like rough. damn i was like i'm gonna have to wait it out you're like you know what later, later. that's a later, later. experience for sure in life
It was so That's funny sickening. too. Porsche is such a specific car too, and like one of the girls was like talking about Tesla and how they have self-driving cars because because yeah. Porsche just came out with a Macan electric, so they have electric cars too, and you know all that. But mm -hmm. um, they're like, do you think they'll ever have self-driving Porsches? And their team was like, you know why we create Porsches, right? They're cars to drive. The mm. whole point in a Porsche is to drive it. To experience it. To ex it's an experience, like, mm. to drive these cars. And I was like, that is so true. And I said, I will tell you something else about Porsche. Since I've driven mine for so long, it's a sports car. By the way, Carrera yeah. means sports car. Oh, okay. It means race car. Sorry, it race means race car. Race car. Race car Carrera race car. means race car. It means race. A 911 okay. race. 911 race. That makes uh -huh. a lot of sense. Yeah. So, um... If you get behind the wheel of any other car after driving it for so long, you just will be Feels like, strange. it's it's like nothing goes. Mm -hmm, like nothing mm -hmm. goes like a Porsche, you know what I mean? Totally. So um, I was like, they also ruin you. I was like, because I get rental cars all the time when I'm mm -hmm. traveling. And it's they're nice cars, but I'm like, this is a piece of it's shit. It's not the same. It's, it's not, not the, same. the same. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to that I've horse power. I've been in Laura's Porsche a many times. They're very zoom Many, zoom. many, many, many times. Yes. And like, honestly, like, thank God for that Porsche and the speed because everyone else was going to shit myself. <gasps> And we had to go and to Taco Bell. And it saved your life. And it saved, Porsche has saved my life. The title of this video, <laughs> Porsche, Porsche saved, saved my life. Literally life. Literally yeah. saved me because we rushed somewhere and the Porsche mm -hmm. got us there. It got us there. And I almost shit in your it seat. It will always get you there. I love my car so much. So mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is like, it's so cool. They let me borrow all these cool cars. And then I'm like, I, I have this, like, I love this car, but I have this car. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm I just keep loving I'm it. I'm chilling. You're yeah, like, I'm it. chilling. I'm chilling. But they're so I sweet. I'm going to take us all to the um, Porsche experience. They're going to let us drive cars, the Porsches around the racetrack. Shut up. Yeah. I'm, I'm like telling them, like, they're, they're going to hook us up. I would love that. Yeah. So um, I would gonna, freaking I'm making love that. that happen a hundred percent. Oh my god, yeah. I love, I'm obsessed. Like it's I really love cool. I love the love that you have for the car and the fact that they are so cool with you. Like so cool. That's really cool. Like the fact that like that's what I'm saying. Like it's a testament to you too, because they invited you to the trip to London. You went. They liked you so much that they invited you there to the next trip. That's crazy. I know. Like that I, just I like shows really that you honored. really like yeah. Give them totally. a lot of love and you were, it was very genuine. Yeah. You know? Totally. So I think it's really awesome. Yep. It's really cool. All right. What's your pit, peak? My, my my pick and peak. Oh my gosh. Mine would be so today's my brother's birthday. Ooh. Happy uh, birthday, birthday to Aaron. Aaron. Um, so that's would be my peak, but I'm going down to San Diego tonight. Oof. Literally after the podcast, driving to San Diego tonight, which is literally like partly my pit because I literally have to drive tonight. Far. And then I'm only there for 24 hours. Jeez. And then I have to try it back because I'm busy. As booked. fuck on Thursday. Booked and busy. And I'm, so, baby, we are booked. We are going. We are going through the gigs. Also, I will say, I recently went to the doctor for so my eye. Because I remember oh, I was like. Oh, <laughs> my God. I was like, you guys, like, this doesn't seem normal. Like, me getting styes, like, every other month or whatever. Like, this doesn't seem normal. Like, I don't I don't understand. So, I'm going to go to an optometrist, right? Because I was like, this is crazy. Like, this is too much. I just had another one in my left eye. And I was like, hey, guys, like, I want to go to the optometrist. So, I went over. They were like, you're actually getting Chalazians, which is actually like a bigger. That sounds bigger, like churro. It sounds, it literally sounds like chorizo. Chorizo. Yes, it does. It sounds very, very strange. So styes are like in like a little like infection in the hair follicle. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like almost like a pimple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a sty, but a Chalazian is in your gland, like lower. Mm -hmm. So like, that's why it's always like lower when I have them. They're always like down here, but I didn't realize that. It's not that. even a sty. It's not even a sty. Which I'm actually makes so much more sense because it was like, how can you possibly keep how? getting that many styes? This makes more sense. It, it made Leave no it sense to Leave it to the doctor to know what's going Literally, on. I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense. So they were actually <laughs> telling me that I have a myobian gland dysfunction. Okay. And I was like, I have a what? <laughs> they were like, you, you just like. What you call me? And I was like, huh? <laughs> so they said I have um, myobian MGD is what they call it. And basically it's like your glands can over or under produce the oil in your eyes. Okay. Because like, you know, like you, you need oil for your eyes to like stay hydrated. Yep. It's not just water. Like okay. you need the oil to that. grasp onto. I had no, <laughs> baby, <laughs> this is know me that. now that's, knowing that's all this news. stuff. So um, you need oil in your eyes to keep the water from evaporating. Okay. So you have to have it I mixed in. I guess that makes in. sense. So the, everyone has these little glands and these ducts down here to release oil. Humans are amazing. We're, we're incredible. We're incredible. We are self like, we can heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, that's crazy. It's we're just, literally... It's unreal. We're literally X-Men. Yeah, honestly. Um, And so I just either overproduce or I can't remember what she said, but now I just have to be a little bit more, like, cognizant of the fact that I have to use, like, you know, like, eyelid scrubs and, like, a different kind of wash for my eyelids specifically okay. because I just... 
it there's like no like real like treatment for it yeah you just have to be more conscious like yeah yo you like just produce more so you just have to make sure that there's flowing so a blockage will happen and that's when i get it oh my god you get a blocked duck. it actually makes so much sense mm -hmm. though a blocked duck will happen because the thing is like remember when i went to like lens crafters and they're like oh yeah da, da, da. like you have really clean um lash lash lines i'm like i know like i'm very diligent about i'm, I'm a i'm a two-day cleanse kind of person like i'm not like mm -hmm. i don't have nasty ass fucking eyelids like mm -hmm. i don't like what the fuck i don't have nasty eyelids like you is look at my under thing? is that a common well, the thing, thing is, like, let's nasty say, like, if someone eyelids? doesn't like wash their mascara off that's they're gonna me have... that's I'm just i do have lash glue build up all the time though. i have lash glue build up sometimes but like no you get in there and pick every little thing out but, I, but i'm I saying like i am too. like freaking diligent about i getting just want to optometrist my, I make to be like you're nasty i want to i want to see a microscope on those lashes <laughs> because they literally what they do is when they check it they're doing a microscope onto wow. your lash line so they're literally like looking at like what is in there and they're like you have actually like surprisingly really clean and i was like i know so why the fuck am i getting mm. sized like you're not getting sized Oh my god! And I'm like, oh my gosh, this makes so much more sense. I have a little dysfunction. Yeah. But I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, at least I know what it is, and I can at least treat more and just be more conscious of it. Right. And um, you know, and now I'm on, like anti. So whenever I get one, like I just tend to go on antibiotics for it. Right. Which is like not good though. To I will keep say. going on those over and over. I again, can't. Right? Like I cannot go on no. antibiotics every two months. No. Like and the thing is, it's antibiotics for ten days. You're doing two pills a day. That's so much. That's a lot, and then it destroys your gut biome. Yep. Like so, I have to almost take like probiotics to like, help fill that in. So just like I kind of a lot, but I'm happy to at least know that that's what it is, and I'm not crazy, and I'm not this like nasty bitch that's just getting styles mm. all the time. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Yes. So it's just nice. Like I feel like that it's like a peak and pit, and they go no. So I have a, an appointment on the calendar, which I'm not going to go to. I at least have it scheduled. They're like, we want to do a, sh a steroid shot into the Chilean to no make way. it go down, and I'm like, I'm going to put that on the calendar. I'm just not going to show. There's I will be canceling beforehand. Literally on no the phone, way. they call me and I'm like, hey, so um, chances are high I'm going to be canceling this. But if you want to put it on the calendar, go right ahead. Okay, that's good. The thing good. is, for me, my my the Chilean season is going down. The antibiotics are doing their thing. You can like barely even see I have one on my left eye now. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it's very small. I can't tell at all. You I can't, can't even tell. tell at all. So it's much much smaller. If I were to go like this and show you, you can see it. Okay. But it's so small that I'm like, girl, I'm not getting a shot. Oh my god, that sounds imagine crazy. a needle underneath, not over here. It's going. You're going under and uh -uh. you're going in like that. Uh uh. Bro, what? Couldn't be me. No, Joan was really nasty. What? Trigger warning, just for the nastiness. I, yesterday, so like every morning, like I obviously do my lid scrubs and I do like hypochlorous acid spray just to make sure my eyes are really, really clean. And so I like look at the thing and like I was like looking at it and I was making sure and I was like, kind of like rubbing doing this. When I rubbed, <gasps> what? a little thing popped. No. And it shot on the mirror. No. From your eyeball? From my eyeball. Oh, from my, from the, or the from skin my duck. under your eye. Mm -hmm. It literally shot out. Tyler's fake doing it right now. It shot into the mirror. I literally screamed. I was like, oh my God. So I got a Q-tip and like made sure I cleaned it. And I was just like, what is going on? What is going on? What Your is eyes going are on? squirting out juice. Yeah, literally squirting juice. But the thing is, when that happened, it started to get smaller. Uh, probably drained it. So it's like draining. I think that's like, I just like drained it in like a more God, forceful this way. this is crazy. But it's the draining. I just drained it faster. This is so crazy. It's All sick. of this is sick. It's sick. So um, mm. yeah, now at least I know what it is. Do you know what I think would be really hard? What? Being blind. <laughs> I do. I don't mean to laugh. I just was not expecting that. I just, I just think being blind that. would be so difficult. Oh, it's like, I can't, like, I obviously can't even imagine. And, like, I love to, like, drive. Totally. I love to, like, do things that, like, mm -hmm. you just have to have vision for. No, and it's crazy, too. Like, even people that, like, you know, like, are legally blind, but there's, like, a little bit of sight when they have, like, a pinhole oh, that they yeah. can see through Oof. only, like, it's Oof. just those people are so strong. Yeah. Because they're still living, living happily, doing their big one. Like, that I mean, is people crazy. are so happy that are blind. It's just like, no, that totally. would be like, it would be easier to be born blind than maybe well, you would take not, it, it would, away. Because you, know, yeah, you never totally have different. any concept. You would never have any concept. You would never love to drive because you never drove. Like, It'd be completely different. It would just be like a completely different situation. But like, just going, doop, oh. Mm -hmm. That is like a whole, I like, think that is just like probably the depression you would go into would be so crazy. Like imagining that I, and i'm also grateful for good vision because i've never had glasses yeah, LASIK, it's you like LASIK. nothing mm -hmm. uh -uh. and you have 2020 yeah amazing mm -hmm. uh my mom had um not the best vision she had to get lasik as well yeah. so i knew that i probably my mom and that. dad um had to wear glasses really yeah but later on in life or yeah, like my, no. a dad forever mom later on in life 
Well, a lot of people when they get older, they will just have yeah, to wear just glasses. Like, especially oh, like, just, I dread like, that up. so much because I, I actually appreciate my vision. Like, I I, it's something that comes to me, and I'm like, oh, you're like, God, oh, thank God. Crazy. Literally, it's like a blessing. A but, blessing. Um, no, but honestly, like a lot of times, as you get older, like you just need them for to read. Yeah. But you keep your far sight, the 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 close it's sight's the harder. The near sight. Mm -hmm. You know that you're supposed to look off like far out to stretch your eyeballs like a certain amount of times a day, and like really? none of us ever do that because we're all in buildings like and this? rooms, and we're inside like we're not even in a space to look out far enough that we're supposed to but we're not supposed to, to live like out. this like we humans weren't built for this they were built for outside more so mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so imagine like, how bad your eyesight gets after being on the phone all the time girl oh like, the screens the screen time like all you're doing is like absorbing from the screen time like you can't it's short form constantly like this like you're not going to be able to I just, I'm sure in the future that people will be like, oh yeah, that definitely like kind of deteriorated. Well, it your does sight. because they have the thing. I have it turned on my phone now, where you're, if your screen's too close, they turn your screen off or Stop like it. it's like back up. Yes, that's because a, that's a function. Yes, on, there? on the iPhone, I have mine on because I, I did, had no idea. I was like, I'll turn it on. It'll probably never pop up. Bitch, it popped up. Time. But now I'm in a habit aware, of like not this. because it pops up so much that you will automatically be trained. So I don't do it anymore. But holding your phone up like this to see close, like it will go, eh, it like buzz Bro, and be I like, you're too that. close. You need to back up. So I turned that function on on my phone and now it never pops up because I, I trained myself to stop doing that. Laura, I didn't know that was a thing. I'm, under, I'm Unlocked. Turn that on. You guys should turn, I'm gonna turn it on. It's going to annoy the living piss out of you, but it's also going to call you, you out for you're mm -hmm. constantly holding your phone screen way too close to your eyes. Bro, that's actually really genius. And it can save like your that. vision or prolong it anyways. Which also like my mom, so she wears one contact in her eye, one out. Like one uh -uh. for nearsighted, one for farsighted. Like her normal eye, like for farsighted normal. And then when she's like, like she can do things up close with this eye. So everything just kind of acclimates to each other. Oh my God. But when she goes like this, it's like, it's different. That's so wild. Like that. So she's like, oh my God, I have to drive. So I'm gonna take my contact out. Wow, that's contact. so crazy. Just contact. Contact. And I was like, oh, okay, Dang. work. Well, like that just like, as you get older, like People your eyes just leave your little, contacts uh, in and you're not supposed to stop doing that. Stop it. Stop it. It's you guys are sick. Yeah, it's not worth it. No, I've, I've seen, have you Don't seen videos where they find contacts in people's eyes? In the back of their head. Yes. Yes, awful. That shit is crazy. I'm just so grateful like I never needed contacts because they do seem to be a little bit of a hassle. I would rather wear glasses than contacts. Yeah. So you I, when did. I, when you I did, did glasses. And I did. I had glasses when I was younger in college and stuff like that because mm -hmm. I just couldn't handle the idea of putting contacts in. and now in the eye. Constantly. Yeah. So I would rather just wear glasses. And even when I get my little Chilesians, I'm like, baby, I'm wearing glasses all day every day. Yeah. They're absolutely. Fake. There's no fucking... <laughs> Oh, to cover? To cover. I'm just doing it for the cover. Yeah. The cover of night. Sunglasses even. I'm literally in the gym with <laughs> glasses on. Yeah, I'm absolutely. not even kidding. Don't care. Thank you so much to ZocDoc for sponsoring this portion of Full Coverage. You guys, ZocDoc is an amazing free app and website where you can search and compare high quality in-network doctors, choose the right one for your needs, and click to instantly book an appointment. You guys, they have over 100,000 healthcare providers across every specialty from mental health to dental health to mm. eye care to skin mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and truly so much more. Plus, ZocDoc appointments happen fast, typically within just 24 to 72 hours of booking. You can even score same-day appointments. It's so easy to use. You know, living in Los Angeles, it's like I don't even know where to begin. Literally, same. I don't even know where I to begin. I love Doctor. I've literally used it so many I mean, times. Me, us now. too. It's literally a go-to, and I tell people all the time. They'll be like, "Oh, do you have a dermatologist?" Or oh, I'll mm -hmm, be like, "Yes, mm -hmm. let me give you my recommendation." But I, I will literally be like, "But you should download Zocdoc because it'll find you, you know, a healthcare provider in your network in your area that takes your insurance and that's actually taking appointments." It's truly incredible. I swear, ZocDoc is literally my our favorite my favorite part that we have here. It's absolutely incredible. So stop putting off those doctor appointments and go to ZocDoc.com slash fool to find and instantly book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash fool. ZocDoc.com slash fool. This episode of Full Coverage is brought to you by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your day is so packed you just have no time for yourself? Mm -hmm. All the time. Well, therapy is more important than ever in those points and times of your life. It's important to take time for yourself. It's important to take time for your mental health. And I love BetterHelp so much for that because no matter how busy you are, BetterHelp is so accessible for therapy because you're able to do it online, on the phone. It's not in person. I cannot agree with you more. I love therapy. I've been in therapy multiple times in my life, and I'm just a huge advocate and fan, especially when it comes to, like, self-care. It should be a self-care non-negotiable, really, because, yes. like, people do, they work out, or they get their nails done or hair done. I was like, why isn't therapy, like, a 
non-negotiable for you. It should absolutely be something that you should take care of the most of all. And what better way with better help? Yes, it's so powerful for learning positive coping skills and setting mm-hmm. boundaries, empowering yourself, and so much more. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out the brief questionnaire. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash full coverage today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash full coverage. Well, um, I'm glad you figured it out. Mm-hmm, me too. And I'm glad we have vision. Me too. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so my pit is, it's a quick one, but last night I was doing a hot sculpt class, kind of like hot Pilates. Mm -hmm. And they're not as hot as hot yoga because it's a high intensity workout. So like obviously they're going to turn the heat down. Mm -hmm. It was record breaking. It was a record break. I don't think I've ever taken a class that hot before. Wait, you're lying. And it was sculpt. Yes. Oh, so it was like hot as fucking you did it. It was over over 110 degrees. And we're like doing jumping jacks and push ups and like the like more high intensity. I... I have never felt such you not strength faint? in myself. I started to brown out a little bit, but I go. was like, come back. Bring I'm coming back. back. I'm coming back. Ooh. Stop. Dude, you have to eat before, right? I'm assuming you're like a, oh, little, yes, a morsel. You like, have to have a full. Because how could you I not faint? I would say, like, you can't meal. even be slightly hungry. No, because I was like, how would you serve? Literally, physically, how would you even, like, get through it? It was if you don't have one of the stomach. most challenging things I think I've ever done. And I've done these classes for over two years. Literally, you've done it forever. And I think it was. And the person behind me was like, this is the hottest class I've ever taken. And she's actually a teacher at the studio. And she was behind me because a lot of the teachers take the classes. Yes, yes. And she was like, this is the hottest class I've ever taken at the studio. And I was like, we were like, yes, like this is crazy. And she was like, it says a lot about the teacher though because the whole class was just like slam full, like everybody in there. Really? And she was like, most people will walk out if it's too hot like that and she was like she's keeping the whole class together so she was like says a lot about the teacher which it's literally wow. my favorite teacher of all time that did it so i'm like whatever let's let's challenge how uh, cool the fact you can have like a teacher that will like inspire you to like come in oh yeah is insane yeah sometimes teachers too in there they'll say like the most deep methodical things mm-hmm. like to start the class and i'm like well I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Like, I, like, it's, like, so deep. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I do that, and this teacher does that a lot. And it's, like, I can be inspired off someone that has a lot of, like, sense and a lot of, like, 100%. wisdom yep, to share. Yep. And it's, mm-hmm. like, so accurate. So I'm, like, I appreciate that always. You'll take that in. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And it was hot as ball sack. It was, like, the hardest thing I've ever done. And, by the way, that these classes are because I'm in that heat and I'm working out that hard. And that's literally the only reason I'm able to run like I do. That's so the true. Stamina. You have it's stamina. It's all the stamina that you build. From, like, and being in the heat uh-huh. plus exercising. Uh-huh. Because it drives your heart rate up, too, drastically, plus exercising. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's no wonder you, you have lose stamina. Your, you horse. also lose your fight or flight, which is, like, one of the most powerful tools to kind of, like, lose that a little bit mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. we use it way too much. I mean, our brains, like, we of live course, in a naturally. different world. Naturally. Mm-hmm. Naturally. Yeah, totally. Like, the world we live in today, like, our fight or flight is if, triggered if it, if it gets a little hot, if yep. it gets a little too cold, if we're mm-hmm. a little too, like, everything triggers our fight or flight. Mm-hmm. So, it really helps to you to get that under control. And, obviously, running and cardio is going to trigger a fight or flight. Absolutely. You're like, bitch, what are you yeah, running from? Are we good? Gonna explode i can't yes. do it it's yes. too hot i'm sweating too much you know and then you're able to just turn all that off so it's all That's from amazing. the heated classes though you know the number one rule of hot yoga don't die you can't do hot yoga without telling everyone you do hot yoga <laughs> Okay, I'll that's the most that. accurate ass shit I've I ever freaking heard. I know. I know. I We're so that. annoying. It's like yogis. Yogis are yogis, so annoying. Dude. Yogis are like, I do we yoga. Are. We are. That's literally what it is. But also, like, you work so hard to do it, so it's almost like you aren't, you're proud of it. Yeah, it's like, like beca- yeah, it becomes I your lifestyle. <laughs> that, it literally does. If yeah. I was in a class, oh my God. I would be dead. My balls would be hanging to the ground. To the ground. Let me Bro, tell you that. It's that hot. Like, my balls are literally hitting Let the floor. Let me tell you that. That shit's crazy. I never invite anyone to do them because it takes, like, four or five classes well, to, get you have to get acclimated. Get acc- I was going to say, you probably have to so acclimate to it. So there's going to be laying there miserable. And I'm going to be yeah. like, come on. Let's, let's go. go. Hey, you're the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would never. People are like, you should teach. I'm like, I don't think I can pay my bills. Uh, no. <laughs> like I don't think I don't think that's a, like we Sadly, forget guys work. I need money I have to pay bills 
Like, not that they don't, don't make money. No, Personal trainer like, teachers make really good money. Well, some of them make really good money, but like, all, honestly, most of the teachers there will talk about their other jobs too. But I was like, yeah, I was just saying, like, a, a mortgage is fierce. Because they come in and teach an hour class and then they're out of there. You know what I mean? It's not right, like a full time job. Right, mm -hmm. right, 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 right. And yeah. it can be like a guest spot. I also have no desire at all to teach anything. At 100%. all. I have no desire to be a teacher. And that's okay. We're not all meant yeah, we're to not be meant teachers. To yeah. I don't want to teach you. I want to enjoy the class. I don't want to mm -hmm. run it. Mm -hmm. After I coached for volleyball for those years, I literally now I can't even imagine doing that because mm -hmm. it was really hard and really taxing. And it's like your players, your kids, like you teach them how to do something, right? So you like see them flourish, but it just takes a special kind of person. I think, yeah, some people that, that they so like that, but mm -hmm. like, I don't want to, I want to be taught, mm -hmm. you know, you wanna learn. Yeah, I want to learn. Wanna teach. I want to be the learner. But you teach a lot of people. Self-help. Let's yeah, that actually, I do you see a lot, a lot of people. comments. And, like, full and that's coverage, so sweet. Like, Thank our you, full guys. Fam, like, they, be, they be riding for you hard. And you know what? In the past, I've been like, not scared, but not as wanting to talk about self-help, open about it mm -hmm. as much because people combat it so much. And really? to me, it's like, I don't care if you think everything I say is bullshit and you don't do it. Like, I don't care. All yeah. I'm trying to say is like, this is what I do. This mm -hmm. is what works for me. If you use it, fuck yes. Like that, I'm so happy you used it. And I and know it, it will work for you. Mm -hmm. I know it will. It just does when you're consistent with these things. But like, I would get like, I've seen in the past people argue it. I'm like, what are you arguing? Like, like either that's you- like my life. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, okay, like, what are you exactly. arguing? Like, that's what I'm doing. It's my belief. It's my life. Like yeah. I believe in like all the things. So, um, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I didn't want to talk about it as much because I like don't want anyone to hear it. But like, honestly, it's been so positive and oh, people have written super. paragraphs on how they've used this tool and that tool and changed their life. And I'm like, damn, I'm gonna have to keep talking about it. You then. do. I think you do. I think it's amazing. I think that you do such a great job. And I think that you do a good job at like reiterating points that stuck with you when it comes to your self training. Because I'm sure there's things that you're kind of like, okay, okay. Like even when you're reading and doing yeah. things that you're like, it's probably not gonna fight me as much, but you'll take things that will. And mm -hmm. then you share those and people can see that and they utilize it. Yeah, it's like the 1% rule. Yeah, that's a huge you know, one. That's a great one. I think that's it's like just like one. you just take things that you feel like could apply to you yeah. and what you like. Mm -hmm. you uh, honestly, like 90% of it applies to me, though. It applies to everyone. Yeah. Because the things they talk about are pretty general. And I've read like probably like 15 books on like completely different topics. Mm -hmm. So it's like and I am also always re recycling books because it's like so good to take all that in. 100%. You forget, you know, you forget. Yeah, because you live life. You live life. And you it's forget. so easy to kind of mm -hmm. just like, oh, it's good. I always have one in rotation, though. Good. Always. Anyways, let's talk about some hot topics. Let's do the hot twappies. Can we talk about the um the Love is Blind reunion? Yes. I love is blind. It is Love Island. Uh, love Island. It is Love is Blind. No, Love Island reunion. A quick little recap. Oh, let's do it. Let's get into it. I just have so many thoughts. Me too. Where do we even so many, start? Like, where do we even fucking Should start? Should we start with the juiciest, Kendall and Nicole? Uh, please. That's, I. Let's hear oh God, it. I'm so. I want to hear your thoughts on it. I'm first. actually like really kind of annoyed with the whole situation, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. So, this, and the reason why I'm annoyed, okay. Kendall went through this literal traumatic experience. Huge, yeah. He's literally shaking. And if you're watching the, the the thing, he's shaking, talking about how, you know, the video came out, whatever, it popped up. For the, first of all, even going back, Nicole even bringing up the video in the, and the thing is crazy, just first and foremost. But him talking about it, like, you know, I, he's him saying, he's like, I feel like I lied because it was the most traumatic thing that was happening to me at the time and I didn't even know what to do. Mm. The person that I care about the most in my life don't even know how to go about it. Like I didn't even know Guys, what to do in the new, situation. Uh, he had a nude sleek as soon as he got out of the casa and like a video of him naked nudes, like a video went out to the public and that's what Manny's talking about. That's the, yeah, that's what I'm referring to. So um, Nicole and him, like they were the couple in the thing and they were strong in the in the show, very strong. They made South 4. And then it's been like crickets outside of the show. And everyone's kind of like, what the fuck is going on, right? So Nicole is kind of like going in and be like, what about me? What are my, my feelings? But she got berated online for three weeks. Absolutely. And Kendall, not as much. I think I think it was more did. Nicole. Well, on the Nicole situation, he did not. He was not bullied on that. She was the bad oh, guy. Oh, for sure. She was, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. During he got other in that situation, for, he got his he own got his trauma. Old, but that didn't have to do with Nicole. No, 100%. That was his own thing that he was going through. Like, that was his own, like, he was getting fucking, obviously, lit up for that. She was getting braided for almost, like, The breakup. Not, the breakup. For the breakup. She, for was, them breaking she up. took the blame. She took the hit for the breakup. For the breakup, yes. Even though they never said that they were broken up. Which, to me, is also crazy. I had no idea that even I didn't brought either. it up. I had no I idea. I did not either. So, they're talking about it, and... 
I do feel for Nicole in a way where she's like, you know what? Like mm -hmm. this sucks. This situation happened. And like, I feel like you weren't there and you did lie to me. But I, I, for, to me, that's crazy. It's like, I actually felt for Kendall in the situation. Um, and I felt bad for him. And like, I wasn't even like a Kendall stan at all. Like I just, I feel for him because he's the one that dealt with the traumatic experience and he didn't know how to go about doing it and s dealing with it with his partner. And what I really think I have a conspiracy. Mm. I'm going to say that after we talk about it is that I just feel like, he didn't know what to do and he mm -hmm. loves her and he tr has tried to talk to her and you know give her space whatever it might be but he didn't really know how to go about it even though there's still love there i think that's the part that's hard because she's just like what about me what about me what about me and like obviously she's dealing with it too but it happened to kendall yeah you know he's the one that's dealing with the most traumatic experience and like she's involved obviously and what is and what is he supposed to do to defend you online mm -hmm. in a way where what is he supposed to say to make it like all better like hey guys like my fucking nudes just leaked but like obviously you see like you guys are attacking my girl please don't attack her but i'm the one dealing with this experience i don't know what you're supposed to do i have a question because i just want to make sure i understand it, it was like yelling and moving so quickly literally there's one part okay so he lied to her you know the the, the news leaked mm -hmm. she comes to him He's in panic mode. All this is happening like, at once. Years ago. And and him and Nicole haven't even been together that long. They're not even boyfriend girlfriend. So he mm -hmm. freaks out. He lies. And the lie was now correct it happened me. Two years the ago. lie was that it happened two years ago, but it didn't. He was currently sending that to another person right on a Costa dating left. app. Right before he left. Right, right before, before he, he left. left for the show? Yes. So who cares? He wasn't with anyone. This is this is my point. This is I why we're thought, literally like, what the so fuck? So this is why I was like, I'm going to get Manny to explain for me before I put an, impo an input, an input, because I want to make sure. I thought, see, I was always on Nicole's side because I thought the lie was that he currently sent it. Like, as soon as he got back no. from filming the show, he's before. dating, but not girlfriend and boyfriend with Nicole, but dating Nicole, talking to Nicole, and then he's going off to the side and sending, okay, this is. This happened is before. <laughs> Did it just take a whole turn for you? Yeah. See, that's, that's the part I that I'm like, like. I would be mad too. If this oh, man, he's pissed. like cheating essentially. He was cheating. literally cheating. But this happened before they left. Oh my God. So my, so now, so that's the situation. He should have just told her the fucking truth. That's I not know. even crazy. That's not nothing. It's not, it's no, I know. I'm like, yeah, I was on apps before I got on the show. Like, I was okay, single and, and I uh -huh. sent it. Like there's, mm -hmm. no, there's nothing wrong with that. In my opinion. I agree. Like, I completely agree. So what, he should have just said it. But I think he literally was just like. In shock. I also thought Kendall definitely could have said, like, Nicole was getting berated. He could have literally said what they said in the reunion. Hey, we're working things out. Mm -hmm. Like, give us some space. Give us some time. We're he not broken podcast, up. Though. Oh, did he? He did. Oh, he said, okay. like, we're like, okay. we're, we're still going, we're still working through it. See, I feel like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like she so was I saying, like, like, he didn't say anything. Do you know what I think, though? What? Like, now my conspiracy. Now this is where the conspiracy hat's coming on. This is not full, I'm like, now for understanding where the cast and everybody was coming from, though, now. Yes, because obviously all the cast is like, girl, you're Because now that crazy. I understand what the lie, no, the, I, I, yep. Mm -hmm. So my conspiracy is that when Nicole saw the video, she got the ick. She was annoyed as fuck. And, she, and my also conspiracy is that Kendall, he, so when she talked about it, it was very specific. She said... He told me two years ago that he sent it to a girl he was dating. When she talked about it now, she's like, oh, he's on a dating app sending that video. That's why I got confused. Yes, but before he left. But then why are you saying it like that? Why aren't you like, unless it was something like where he's sending it to a man. Mm. Like, honestly, like, think about it. So, like, he's on a dating app. I think it's a crazy video to not send to a man. That's what I'm saying. So what if that's why she feels so passionate about it? Because like, he was what if he's by? Yeah. And that this whole this situation, and her going she crazy. Can't say. And she can't say that. She can't out him. But that's I just. I could see that. I could see I, that. I could see that. This again, obviously a conspiracy. I can see that her reaction to that is so visceral and so intense. It was fierce. It was very, very but fierce. I thought he basically cheated on her. Nope. So everything is so skewed for me. So now I'm kind of like, well, yeah, it was a fierce. It was fierce for, for a lie. For what the lie was. For what it was, it was it's crazy. So crazy. It was so but that's, crazy. And I think that's why the whole entire cast is literally We're like, trying to calm her down. But when about? a whole cast comes at you, now you're being attacked. So, you're you know, pissed. the only person mm -hmm. in the room that made any sense is our girl, um, 
Serena. Serena. Making yep. sense always. She's the, the only lie. one. She shut the whole thing down. Mm -hmm. She was like, we hear you. Like, this fool lies he to lied, me. Be this, yeah, too. be it's crying. Over. I'd be pissed. It's over. Mm -hmm. Like, I validate your feelings, but this man loves you and y'all need to go talk. That was, that was the only it. sound of reason. Hear. Yes, it. And Nicole was fine. She was like, and Nicole. Bet. But everybody coming at her, like, that man loves you. Like, how, do you know what I think it is, too? Ariana didn't do a great job at, like, like navigating the conversation. That was her first time. Totally. And I feel like we have to give her grace because I think she did, like, the best when it comes to navigating because everyone talked over everyone so many times mm -hmm. but it's her first time ever doing a, a hosting thing so it's like she's gonna get better at it mm -hmm. it's gonna get better but because of it, it was so junk convoluted nicole obviously is gonna feel attacked mm -hmm. and she's like at the end of the day he lied he lied but the thing is do you think that she's pissed again conspiracy hat on because he could have lied about sending that to a man could have lied about well, sending absolutely. It to a, like because whatever the reaction it might be. was crazy that's what i'm saying yeah so that's why i have a, my own personal conspiracy i'm like maybe she is got the ick because it could have been sent again. Like, what if, what if, like, Kendall was like, oh, you know, like, this guy has hit me up, sent, like, I'll, I'll pay you to send me this I video, the, and he did. I think the main thing, too, that Nicole was upset about is the heat she took. It does something. It alters it your does. brain. And you have to remember, these people aren't influencers. They haven't been online. They haven't dealt with this layer mm -hmm. of... Like, it does something to it you. It changes you. It changes you. Mm -hmm. Taking mm -hmm. in this kind of heat. Like, the it will intensity. literally change your brain chemistry. I'm not even kidding. So, I feel like she was carrying the weight of all that all shit that for online for three weeks of just braiding online, blaming her for all the shit. And I think that... Um, she was probably so upset about that. She mm -hmm. exploded when 100%. she got in there and got to tell her side of things. 100%. I think the part that's hard is that, like, you, she can feel her feelings, mm -hmm. but you can also be empathetic. Yeah. I think that's the hard part. I don't Especially think, if I'm you catching, love someone. Yes. I'm not catching, I'm catching zero empathy for Kendall, like, at all, is what it's come like. It seems like, but what about me? I got shit, too. What about me? What about mm -hmm. me? What about me? And that's how I came across at the reunion. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't come across like where she's like, oh, my God, I know he's going through it. The gigs. Not at all. No. And I think that's the part that's like it's it's falling on deaf ears. Because yeah. it's like, girl, if that's your person that you love. Yeah. Having zero empathy for your partner and making it come across that way is wild. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that part to me was like probably the craziest of the reunion. I think that was probably the craziest part. Oh, I th but yeah. Aaron and Aaron and Kayler. Aaron got what he needed. He deserved it. And it needed to happen on national TV because we saw Kayler fall for his gaslighting ass over and over again. And everybody's like frustrated with her and like sick of seeing it. And she finally gave him exactly what he needed. He's the biggest shitty person. Like he's just so shitty he's through and sick. through. He's sick. When he said that I put my hand down Danielle's pants and he didn't say that to her after, but he said it on the fucking show. I could not believe Sociopath. the foot that you put in his mouth with that. I was like, you just said that you put your hand down Daniela's pants in Casa. Mm -hmm. on to, never told Killer that, and mm -hmm. she was with you a couple days ago? Yep. And you said it on the reunion? Yep. Are you on? How do you think that's gonna go? Also, it's like Kayler. Why was that the straw that broke the camel's back? Like it would. It already broke. Babs, like she, she just went off because yeah. Of but I'm just like Babs. Like he did so much oh, so that much. you know about. Like any of these things should have set you off like that. Like 100. Oh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like okay, but she now we're this mad. But she didn't know about those things. So she um, probably was already like, I'm pissed off. You use it, and that and they ended. They were already over. Yeah. But then him going like, oh, Danielle's pants. Please she tell me you saw the BFS podcast. Oh, we talked oh, about I it last sure time. When she watched the Casa did. and She's they like, went and did the podcast. <laughs> oh my God. Those two never ne need to never talk again. Also, I'm so bummed. Like, we heard the yappering about all this other bullshit, and then we didn't even get to hear, hear Cordell and Serena speak. I. Those were my favorite. That was my favorite I, couple of the show, and those are the people I wanted to hear and they from. Won. And they won, and we didn't even give them a drop of airtime. What pisses me off, I'm gonna be real, is that they're not giving us like a two part reunion yeah, because they have done of the fact that they showed the entire conversation about uh, eliminating Andrea. I don't even feel like we needed it. I don't, not 15 minutes not worth. Not 15 minutes worth. That's what I'm saying. It, it would have made sense to be in, like, let's say, a two part reunion, having the whole thing, sure. Mm -hmm. But we didn't get enough time of the reunion to focus that much energy on yeah. that one thing. But it was a huge part of the show, obviously. Like, that made, like, that was a big turning point for the show. So they obviously, the production's like, we need to show the whole thing because they clearly think that we're manipulating the whole thing. So mm -hmm. they're going to be like, no, watch, you're going to see the whole thing. Yep. And so that's obviously what they did. And the whole, like, backseat with Leah and there the was whole, no backseat. Like, there was none. Liv talked well, the entire time. Baby, Liv, Liv didn't Liv stop was talking. Like, we sending this bitch home. We're sending her home. Like, Leah was like, and hey, you know what, Leah? I don't even blame I'll you. Blame you. I'll blame you. I don't even fucking blame you. Like, I'm, I'm not like, even mad too. at it. And I, and like, but baby, you, you, you. You absolutely, like, baby. I don't, there was definitely not a thing that I like, vindicated her.
It was no vindication, I don't think. She knew it too, because her was face like, when they said we're gonna play the whole thing, she was just laughing because she was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I get it, like I get it, I get it. I probably would have done the same thing. I ain't even lying. Uh, uh, and the thing is, like, they obviously, the thing is, like, yeah, Leah was like, oh, girl, she's not doing the right, right reasons. The girls agreed. But Leah, but Liv kept being like, are, like, are you sure? sure? <laughs> like, well, Liv like, didn't stop. Aren't we here to, like, <laughs> to, like find matches? And she found love. She's like, uh-uh, we aren't. She's here for the wrong reasons. We think. aren't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say I did I when she when she brought up that she was like here because of the fact that like oh um we're gonna get tables we're gonna become so popular like bringing that up I think that's gonna get into the girl's head too to be like girl what the fuck are you really here for then I think at the end of the day I don't think oh fuck I'm I forget their names uh the blondie Andrea I don't Andrea. think Andrea made very good friends with the girls and I think that's ultimately 100%. what got that's her ass at home I think that's really what it was you have to like you guys when you go into play show like all that, the games. you have to do everything you have to do you all have the to games. be a social person you have to be friends with everyone you have to find a partner in there you need like in order to survive in a show like that you have to be good at the games like mm -hmm. you kind of have to be good at everything to survive that kind of show and to be you have to play the social game of a show like that yeah you can't just like go in do whatever the fuck you want to do and expect everyone to keep you because at the end of the day the the islanders the housemates they vote people out so you have to be smart what uh how did you feel about andrea speaking I felt bad for her. I'm not going to lie. I did too. There was definitely like parts I felt really bad because when they were talking mm -hmm. about that backseat thing, like Andrea looks so defeated. And so like, and the thing is like, don't get me wrong. Yeah, she has cringy moments for sure. And she might not have been there for the right reasons, quote unquote. But like, she, it still sucks to yeah. see get a girl getting kind of destroyed um, because at the end of the day, the girls just don't like her. Yeah. You know, she didn't do anything to make the girls like her. The girls are just like, obviously, the thing is what stuck to them too. When Janae brought out the receipts, <sighs> I was like, oh, it's over. When she brought out the receipt, she goes, what about the part you called Leah two-faced person? Well, why are you going to go on podcasts and do that? Like, girl, girl you are begging. You, br you bring it you on. Bring she brought it, it on. on to herself, but I still feel bad as an empathetic I person. Care. I still feel like a bad, I feel, I still feel bad, like, for her. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, as Janae brought out the receipts, like, you do things, there's consequences for them. They'll probably put her on other TV shows. They love villains. Reality TV loves villains. They love, and the they thing is, not only villains. was she like the villain in the show, like she's kind of cringy. Yeah. They, so it's like that combo yeah, the, is good for her. She'll a show. get casted again. So that'll be good for her. It was honestly like, it was, I wish it was more happening in the reunion. I'm not going to lie. God, I feel I like know. there could have been more discussed. For how big the show was. I think there should have been, like, I, that's what I was saying. I was like, I feel like there should have been like a cut in half and like exposed more. Mm -hmm. And like, girl, some of the people that were there didn't speak one time. One time. They're they, extras. Daniela, nothing. The, Rob didn't ask him a question. Girl, what about the Rob people was like that one were of like, the main characters. One, of the, one of the blonde girls that was a bombshell didn't say a single uh, not word. One, the and whole the thing time. is, they probably did talk, but they, they cut, cut all it. that out. It got cut because they added 15 minutes of, of the talk. I feel like they could have cut that down. 100%, but they are like, we're going to not, we're not editing a single thing. I don't even know that we needed it. I don't know if we did either. Like, duh, Leah, gun for her. Like, I think we duh. all were kind of aware that it wasn't like, duh. You know, like at yeah. the end of the day, like I didn't that's what it like. Was. Honestly, it was like Liv was like running the whole show, though. But Liv I ended up going agree. with the other girl's decision because mm -hmm. Liv wanted to send Nicole home. Yes, and I she agree. didn't. She just did what they told her to do. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but see, then why did the other girls vote for Andrew to go out too? They clearly all must have been it thinking was something just, similar. I think it was just more did, you know? Yeah. Because I think 100%. like Kaylor didn't, I think Liv didn't, and a couple others, but you know, they have a girl group in there. Did, well, it's a girl group, mm, so they're going to. They're going to stick together. Well, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, I mean. honestly, at the end of the day, you just have to play the social game. Yep. And you're on a show like that, you play the social game, and that's just what the reality is. But Oof. it's crazy that it's over, and I'm sad that there's not a part two. I am too. I'm really sad. I am too. <sighs> what is our next topic? Um, Moving on. Blake Lively. Oh my God, dude. Like, I never thought shuttery. I would see the day come. Me neither. I genuinely, Blake Lively. genuinely never did. Did not see that where like, it would be like literally like a downfall. Yeah. Like a fall from grace. She's the J-Lo right now. Oh, I know J-Lo's like this. J <laughs> She's like, Hi, BB. Hey, how's yeah, it, what does it feel like to not tell hey, me? everyone, Blake sucks. <laughs> That's literally true. <laughs> She's like, doesn't she suck? <laughs> Right, you guys? It's actually her PR team releasing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin's. Thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring this portion of Full Coverage. You guys, warmer, sunnier days are calling, and we have to fuel up for them, obviously, with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time for summer 
thanks to the menu of chef crafted meals with options like calorie smart protein plus and keto you know what i really love about factor for me is the mm. convenience like Absolutely. i am so busy sometimes and mm. that lunchtime mm -hmm. meal and dinner is like babes i do not have time and i don't want to go get something super unhealthy because that's typically the quickest option but with factor they're actual nutritious meals i don't yep. have to clean i don't have to cook i don't have to do any of that but i still get all that protein and nutrition in my diet and the gag too is that it's made fresh and it's not like frozen like you can literally just pop it in the microwave yep. and be good to go and i love that aspect of it and i've used factor so many times my brother actually introduced it to me and i love it i also love all their options because they have like a mm -hmm. ton of them and i get tired of a the gazillion. same thing over but they totally. have a good like so many yummy options mm -hmm. you guys can head to factormills.com slash coverage 50 and use code coverage 50 to get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month that code is coverage 50 at factormills.com slash coverage 50 to get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month while your subscription is active thank you to shopify for sponsoring this portion of full coverage shopify is a global commerce platform that supercharges your selling for wherever whenever you're selling on person in line social media and mm -hmm, beyond mm -hmm. Me and Laura are huge fans of Shopify. We both use it for our businesses, Lunar Beauty and Minimum LA. And honestly, it truly is like the easiest onboarding platform there is, I swear. Like even if you don't have Shopify, you can literally easily take over all the products from your last website to this one. It works so simply and very efficiently. Yes, the migrating on the app is so easy. Also, it's a very user-friendly platform. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, I don't know how to build a website, but like even with Shopify, like <laughs> yeah. playing on there is just so easy to do. You learn so much so quickly. So you guys can sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash full coverage. That's all lowercase. That's one month for just $1 at shopify.com slash full coverage. That's shopify.com slash full coverage. So, you guys, there's a lot going on with a, this movie. You know, it ends with us. Yep. And first and foremost, like, let's give it respect because it's about DV and it's mm -hmm. a very, very, very serious topic. And mm -hmm. the book in general, like, I actually have not read the book, but I know Laura has read the I book. I have read the book. And, it's, and my mom has read the book. Like, I know a lot of people have had to read the book. And it's very, very popular. like, very popular, very intense. Mm -hmm. um, it is. And, you know, it should be taken with... A specific kind of cadence when it comes to a topic like this when it comes to the promotion blake lively she's like the main star right her and justin main stars and they're on a press tour right now doing it and it's going bad it has taken a turn for the worst a sick a sick, sick turn turn i think it all began to spiral whenever it was justin kind of putting out statements that blake stepped on his toes because he was supposed to be directing the movie and mm -hmm. she kind of like was trying to take over and then ryan reynolds and her put money into the movies and then you got ryan reynolds putting his input in and trying to take over and then trying to just like bulldoze him out of the movie whenever mm -hmm. he's supposed to be directing it you know that kind of came out everyone noticed that justin and blake were not doing press together so they knew there was some that's beat. how it started like, that's crazy. how this how this Whole no press thing together started. crazy and it was just like an ant hill that just like exploded but that was like the top of it and it was them taking justin's complete and total side like she's the devil justin you know was bulldozed by them mm -hmm, which we mm -hmm. don't have all the facts on that to be no, fair sure. like well, all the nuances the that are being released by each team by each, each party. party like you have like now like blake has like come out to or her team has been like well, you know, Justin may, has made had fat shamed Blake and like did this like whole thing. Like that was like their thing to be like, oh, well, there was a scene that where uh, she gets lifted, but um, she, he made her feel like he couldn't lift her. Da, da, da. Like was like that was a whole situation to kind of take some of the heat yeah. off of Blake. Yeah. But the thing is, and then you see the video pop up of the interview. Yeah. With the other the girl. Mini the mini The interview. Oh, my God. But the one that oh, blew up. That's yeah. like, oh, your little yeah. bump. Yeah, a little bump. That girl went on t the interview. Went on TMZ to do a full, she like she that. she's doing a full like media press tour. press tour on the little bump comment, which is crazy in my opinion. But she, I mean, like Blake was rude as fuck. Girl, I watched the interview and it was really bad. nasty. It was horrible when she nasty. like literally ignores her and she's just talking to her co host the entire time and she's just there like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was horrible. Nasty. And the thing is like, there's also like. Even for, and that was like a while ago, right? The press for this, there was even this awkward moment where 
the interviewer was talking about like, hey, like, what would you say to someone who came up to you and is dealing with oh. domestic violence and is like going through the gigs? Like, would you give like, what kind of advice would you give a person like that? At, like, who's inspired by the movie? And she was like, do they want my social security, my number, my to follow house me? address? I like, thought what do they want. I thought it was a weird question to ask because the way they asked the question was, now that you are in this movie and. If people who are fans of the movie want to come up and talk to you about domestic violence, mm -hmm. like, what do you have to say? So I'm like, it's a weird question. I was like, that's a honestly, weird question. Like, I think that is weird. But I think she answered it in a really stupid, nasty, sarcastic way. Don't. And she was trying it was to be just, like Ryan. She, I thought the same thing. Like, I they thought literally, the exact same thing. Like, I'm like, are y'all fusing she into one She was trying to be unit? funny. She, she was trying to be funny. funny. And it was not but this funny. This is not the conversation to be funny it's about. It's not a funny question. It's not. It's a weird. It's, it's an, a weird to question. To me, it was a bit of an odd question to ask. Like, if a fan comes up on your street and wants to have like a 30 minute conversation about you, with you, about, about domestic violence, what do you, you know what I mean? It was like very that so it was weird because it's it also like why, like that is like a strange situation that to is even a happen strange in general. That, that you create like you like created it so was weird. that's i think why she decided to answer it the way she did i think she answered it in a really stupid way and why it was does she like, be snarky about it though? that was so snarky so snarky like at and, the end of the day like stupid you think, and the, do you see her co-host being like oh he was he was mortified cringing. he was more the jokes didn't land and also horrible jokes. not a time to make a joke not during You're this. You're not. This isn't the, Deadpool. Girl, I'm so gagged. So I'm like, do you not have media training? Like, yeah. Like, it's horrible. It came across horrible. It was horrible. I'm like, literally, like, at the end of the day, she could be like, honestly, I would tell them that they should seek professional help. Yes. Like, you exactly. you go into the route that's like, you get weird questions. Being, you're going to get weird you're gonna, questions. Gonna, babe, that's what, like, they're trying to catch They are. They're you trying up. to catch that's what, you. That's what interviewers like you're trying to do. They're trying to be like, what can we get away with? That interviewer 100% saw her not answering those questions correctly and created a weird scenario to ask her. I'm sure just and to catch she, her up. And caught her ass up because she fed right into it with some stupid ass comments. Her comments were awful. You're horrible. But now they've dug up every like interview ever on Blake yep. Lively. Yep. I did see one and I'm not gonna lie, y'all. These are making me like, Ooh. I, I, how do we not know all this? I life? don't know. How do we, we not know about it. this like crazy, cringy it. situations? Yeah. What's the one that you saw? Okay, you know Gossip Girl, Blair? Yes, yes. What's her real name? Blair I don't Waldorf. know. But okay, we're gonna call Blair. We're uh, gonna call her. Leighton Meester. Okay, Leighton Meester. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 yes. So they're in an interview together, and Leighton Meester's like talking, and I can't remember what specifically said, but Blake just completely was like, "Everyone knows that blondes have more fun, anyways." <laughs> And like the whole crowd like laughs. This. Yes. And the whole crowd laughs. And and Leighton is literally like like literally. I know Leighton hated her. So annoyed. I know she hated her. It was just like such a dumb comment. I wish I could remember all the all the words said in that interview. I saw another one, a, a TikTok clip. And it was during <sighs> this this press cycle, by the way. It's this press cycle. Um, an interviewer is like talking to her on the red carpet or like there's like a little moment or something. Like it's something's being recorded. And like I think a fan like gives her like a little bracelet. Oh, <laughs> and they're and they're just like oh my god thank you so much like i'm not gonna wear it because this goes my outfit but like thank you. thank you and then the next girl comes over and she's like oh my god thank you so much i'm gonna wear it right now and like it's just like so nice about it and it literally was so cringy okay wait it gets worse how about when blake literally goes shh i'm doing an interview <gasps> shh, okay i'll come later she literally on a red carpet where there are like hundreds and hundreds of people straight up to all her fans to shush and she's trying to do an interview. That's J Lo. It's that's like it's that J Lo. So cringe, like yes. so out of touch with reality. Yes. The thing is, like at the end of the day, Ryan and Blake are out of touch with reality. Their yeah. reality is completely different than ours. That's just the truth. He's literally worth a billion dollars. Like mm -hmm. he has crazy companies. Like they're not going to mm -hmm. be in the same world. Mm -mm. So the fact that people even put people on a pedestal like this and expect them to be so human and trying to be this, this yeah. is like, guys, you got to stop. We got to stop putting people on these I pedestals agree. because. At the end of the day, their reality is completely different than what the majority of our realities is. Right. Like, they're not going to see things the same because they're right. not going to be in touch with the real world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, even the idea of, like, putting her on this pedestal of, like, oh, my God, it's Blake. Da, da, da. It's like, yeah, she's a celebrity. But at the end of the day, 
she's not gonna have the she same also struggles. She launched her hair care line on top of the movie what? to promote it. So that was another. I mean, God. What it's about just, that? Bring your girlfriends to wear florals. Uh, okay, but I'm gonna say on that one, producers definitely told her to say that. Okay, yeah, I, I was like, I don't like know. that was a line because she's like, it comes out on God, God, God tells the info, and then she's like, remember to wear your full. Like you could tell that was a line a they told her to remember. Thing. It was a totally. thing. I think they told her to say, but God, there's so much it's more. Still, that, just that's like a lot. Nothing. Like that's just that's another like, thing. Yeah, that's nothing. And I think you know, promote it. It's like this movie isn't like a comedy or like a rom com or like a. You People know, are going in li- destroyed, by the way. Yeah, Coming out destroyed, yeah, like absolutely. Crime. If you read the story, I mean, it's it's super deep. So it's just like not the time to attach branding to it. And that's just another Her layer. Dream company, girl. All Betty that Buzz. to the that one, the hair care line. <sighs> Like everything, like it just, and also like it's because it's, it's so like floral, like also like why is the marketing all floral heavy? Because Lily is a, in the movie, in the uh-huh, book, she uh-huh. owns a florist shop. It's Got all it. about, okay, so that's why she it's like loves flowers. flowers. Yes, that's okay, why. Okay, that makes more that's sense. So they're, so they're doing that thing like that Margot Robbie did for Barbie. Right. So it's like like showing that the character is doing so things that are similar. So you wear your pink to see the Barbie yes, movie. Yes, yes. So Lily's a this. floral girl, so you wear your florals. Okay, I, that makes sense. I, I didn't get it. maybe it was Blake's idea, but it sounded very scripted, the line. So I feel like they probably told her to hit the one line at the end of the interview, like mm-hmm. look at the camera. Hit the line. Say when it comes out, say to wear your florals. So, mm-hmm. But anyways, that is literally 1%. of a drop. Of, that is a drop in the bucket compared to what she's getting ripped for. That ain't even it. You know what nothing. I mean? I'm just at this point, I'm like, uh, now it's all kind of coming back to me, the things I've seen, and it's like, damn, damn, damn. It's just like so many things. I feel like, I'm like, damn, why have we never seen any of these things? Is there a world that Justin is also horrible? Yes, absolutely. I honestly, like, I'm absolutely. not going to lie. Like, when I'm watching it, like, why, to me, like, a total conspiracy, like, why is it that the writer of the book, who is hand in hand mm-hmm. with Justin, now unfollow Justin on social media? Like, none of the cast, like, the cast doesn't follow Justin. Baby, see, I'm Blake doesn't follow you, Justin. I don't Something's think there are in it, in it, in it. I do not think there are any innocent players in this. I completely agree. I really don't. And they're really making don't. Justin out to be a literal hero. And mm-hmm. I'm like. I just don't. I don't see a world where he's like the hero of the story. They're what I do, hero. I do appreciate that he is very respectful of the topic yeah. at hand. And, and not trying to sell something. He's not trying to sell something. Like, I have to give him mad mm-hmm. props because he really, I feel like, has treated this with the cadence that it deserves. And I have to give him major respect for that. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that there Something's wasn't bad the scenes, honey. happen in the movie it's a filming. common denominator situation like the whole cast isn't following i'm sorry but we've just been through all this shit way too many times the common denominator and them not following him is crazy it's crazy that's crazy so that's weird i think the whole thing is a, is a toot no it's a boot it's a boot the whole thing's th- a boot what and then uh, there's another question i have i was like what if because blake and ryan are so huge in the industry and so powerful that people are like well we're just gonna side with them because i don't think so they're that big because she's getting ripped so hard right oh, now that, that, i think this people, before that but do they follow him now? No. No, no. I just don't believe Still there's don't. a hero in the story. I don't either. I really don't. I just, I think that it's nice that Justin has given it respect when it comes to like yeah. the post-production yep. Yep. and talking about domestic violence. And As has being the rest really of the thing. cast. As has the rest of the cast mm-hmm. other than, you know, Blake. Other than Blake, which is crazy. She, you know, she hasn't brought up TV once in all the interviews. It's crazy. Bro, that's what the entire movie is about. Yeah. Like, that's crazy to me. So yeah, we're, I'm very intrigued to see like what continues mm-hmm. to happen and transpire through this, but it's a fucking mess. I never thought I'd see the day where Blake Lively is like in in this in the J Lo nah. seat. Burr. In the J Lo seat. Never in a million mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. Because I really like I think that the whole plus doing the cross promotion with Deadpool Yeah. That was also like really strange. Also Deadpool's too. like a funny movie. It'd be a great time to advertise a product. You know what I mean? Amazing like time. movies that are like stupid and lighthearted mm-hmm. and goofy. Like that's you the can time. just throw shit in. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. I completely agree. It's just like not. Mm-mm. It's not. It's not giving what it needs to be given for this kind of movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next topic. Alyssa comes out. Alyssa Violet, Brooke, and Tana have been beefing for weeks. weeks. I mean, it's kind of been on and off, but uh-huh, you know what I mean. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um. Now that Brooke has found herself in some hot water, Alyssa mm-hmm. has made a YouTube video to speak on her behalf of the situation, which she hasn't got to do yet. Brooke and yep. Tana spoke on it on the yep. podcast and read text and did their half of it. Now Alyssa has come out with her half of it. A lot of Alyssa's is um, like being like, you know, if that was your experience, like that's, I, what, it is. that's what it is. I uh-huh. apologize for mm-hmm. being mean and rude. Totally. So I will say she said that a lot. I feel like yeah, which I'm like, okay, props to her okay. for like owning like owning the nastiness. Yes, owning the shit, and then she explains like you know why she's been like that with like her man cheating on her, and like a lot of people in LA she just didn't fuck with, and like this whole 
bubble of and it. And she admitted that she should have known more about, I think she admitted, like, that she should have known more about Jason Nash before going off. She said she had, like, like, no idea what was Yeah, going like, all the moving parts before mm-hmm. going so heavily to defend him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like... I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, yeah We're all like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it's also just, like, knowing that that situation with Tana happens. So, obviously, Tana's going to feel a specific way about Jason, so she's always going to have a little thing about him. Of course. Of their Which is fair. Experience. That's fair. It's not their experience. So, when, you know, Alyssa comes in, she's like, oh, girl, stop, like, shredding him for, like, no reason. Da-da-da. She's going to be like, bitch, are you crazy? I just don't even feel like Tana went that hard for Jason Nash. Is the whole, This whole thing either. transpired because that's what kicked it off. I'm a joke. And like, the thing key. is, like, Tana's thing was, like, a joke. Like, it was, like, it was she just shredded funny. him, with shade. It was, like, We shade. talked about this. Like, we were literally saying, like, this is literally, like, drag shade It wasn't in a way. even, like, a nut. Like, it was nothing. She wasn't, like, a sit-down expose on Jason. No. She was just, ma- like, At least I'm not, I'm not doing lives like yeah, Jason. Yeah, at least I've never had to do, like, beg for my own lives. So so, you know, it, it like it was light. It was light in babe. comparison. It did not to what warrant the industry a call is now? out. It did not warrant a call out. I will say what's gaggy though to me is that Alyssa showed like receipts from conversations, the, text. the texts about like with Tana and like Tana bringing up like only pants to her. And like she's basically trying to like make it out to be like where she's like disproving what Tana and Brooke have said about on the her podcast. on the podcast. And she's like, well, this is my side. Here's a literal screenshots. And I think that people in the comments were literally like, Oh shit, like this is crazy. So like Tana could have easily flipped the conversation or Tana could have brought it up to her. Alyssa could have seen her out and be like, oh my God, tell me all about OnlyFans. Like right. it could have been like a back and forth thing that did happen. I think happen. at the end of the day, this is a girl fight and it's tit for tat. <laughs> I think this I'm is sorry. a literal tit for tat, like surface you. level mm-hmm. girl fight. And the problem is they both have like a fuck ton of followers. So it just kind of blew up because so many people are involved because of mm-hmm. their popularity online. But yes. I, at the end of the day, I like just see it's this. It's a cat fight. It's a, I've been in them. You've been in them. Mm-hmm. Like it happens, especially in an industry as competitive as this, like shit happens and like tit for tat girl fight. Oh, hun- girl, the fact that Alyssa was wearing like the meanest girl shirt, I literally was like, I, <laughs> there's something about it that I'm like, I think she's owning it. Camp. Like it's camp. It's giving like baby. She owned it. She apologized to people that she hurt, and then she kept moving. And the thing is, she's like, "I've been a bitch. I have been. Like that is the truth." So it's like I can't even fault her for literally being like, "I've been a bitch," and it's the truth. I think she's owned it, and she's like, "I'm sorry to the people that I've hurt and offended. I was I hurt people, hurt people, and I was going through the gigs." Mm-hmm. And she's moved on. Mm-hmm. So it's like I have to give her props for that situation. Yeah, it's just girl fight. It's a girl fight. It's a girl fight. It's a shreddery. It's a shreddery, mm-hmm. and it has entertained people for weeks. Girl. And this saga does continue because I feel you know like now Tana, Tana's say oh, something. Babe, I think Tana's definitely going to say something. I, I saw babe, her tweet. Babe, oh, I know. Wait, wait, what did she say? I heard she Tana like quote tweet. tweeted like Faze Banks, like the ex, and she's like, "I'm tired of Alyssa's bullshit and her lies." Like <gasps> she like went in. She's like, here are the receipts. Oh! Yes, she like posted the screenshot because she was saying that like, oh, she, like girls see sleeping with my ex. And she's like, I literally didn't even know you when I was sleeping with Faze. Wow. Yeah, so I think that there's definitely going to be a continuation of this saga. Oh, whoa. I don't think it ends here and it's going to continue 1,000%. It's 1, about to be a what? Go fight. fight. It's literally going to be. It's not going to stop. At least this stuff is like slightly surface level. Girl, it's literally he said, she said. Is he said, it's she so said, only fans. It's so light in It's just like. like I hate this girl. Yeah. We don't like to. Okay. Yeah. Like that, again, so surface level. Right. So light compared to a lot of the dark topics that are like, you know, very, very intense when it comes to drama and things that can yeah. happen. So this is very surface level, it very, very popcornable. It is popcornable. Um, so I hope, honestly, like in a way, I was like, I hope that they just like kind of figure it out and like move on. Yeah, I think they will. Maybe Tana will get a little blurb in. She will. And then it'll be And I think a, Alyssa a will be like, okay, I'm over it. Yeah. So um, that's interesting, but yeah, and then that's kind of like the tea of the week. Yeah, that's like all the tea that I've seen so far. I hope the best for the girl is. I have like, I went on a trip and Alyssa was there. She was very mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. I've known Tana forever. Love her to death. Yes, we've had Every her time I've had an encounter with Brooke, she's been very nice. So mm-hmm. it's like everybody's been really Everyone's nice. Everyone's been great to, I've had a great experience with all three of them. I've never met Alyssa, but I've met obviously Brooke and Tana, and I've had amazing experiences with them. But I'm sure if I met Alyssa, I don't think it would be a bad interaction. I thought you were literally about to say, I'm sure if I met Alyssa, I don't think I would have a good interaction. And I was about to say. You're like, oh. damn. No, I, I really like, I, especially I mean, after like this thing of her being kind of like, oh, well, like, maybe I was a this bitch will and help her learn it. her lesson to be nice to people. Totally. Well, she, I mean, the her saying, like, I always give grace to people that I say, like, hey, like, I was a bitch. I'm trying to move forward. I've been in therapy. Like, I'm going through the things. Like, I'm going through the gigs. So it's like, I always try to give a little more to grace of people that, like, can own it and try to move forward. 
Well, this is my thing. You know? This is my thing always. No matter what your mistakes are, everybody makes mistakes. And as long as, one, you own them, mm-hmm. and two, you learn from them. Those totally. are the two things you have to do. You have to own them. You and have to l- learn from them. Yep. And I feel like that is literally, and grow. And like I feel like, like that is literally what life's about. It's about making mistakes because we're going to. You guys, and we have we to embrace the people. We are going to make mistakes. We're going to make all kinds mm-hmm. of different mistakes. Own them, learn from them, and move grow. On. That's it. I cannot agree more. We have and we have to give grace to people. Like we have mm-hmm. to. Like I'm sorry. Like I know people like to think that people can make a mistake and that's all they are. Is that their mistake? Is that the all they'll ever be? But it's just not the case. Not Everyone the case. makes mistakes. Yep. People watching now, you make mistakes. You do things that yep. if someone saw it would be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Exactly. Like, that's the reality of yep. life. And just we have as to guilty. Remember that. The viewer is just as guilty. The viewer it could of be mistakes. more guilty. Have you ever been mean to a person before? Yes. Have you ever said something that wasn't true before? You know what I mean? It's, it's all like. like we have to remember mm-hmm. that, like, at the end of the day, like, everyone, everyone's human. Everyone goes through the same mm-hmm. thing. Some people just ha- have more eyes on them. Mm-hmm. And so their their mistakes are magnified, but it doesn't mean that they can't you are, they over, can't, they can't be a good person again. Or they, totally. You can't like, learn from it. she was a mean girl, so fuck her till the end of time. That's just, like, I can't. That's the cancel culture. I just can't, I can't stand by that. get can't. behind. No. And it's just, like, the dumbest thing more. to me. I could not argue more. I think at the end of the day, like, people are constantly growing and, and Tana, forward Alyssa and absorbing. broke me. You were all going to make mistakes oh, again. We're I, not going to be perfect tomorrow today. tomorrow today. Like exactly. Like we're not going to be perfect. Like we can make, and the thing is like, we can make a mistake and we can move on. We can learn and we can grow and we can just keep it moving. That's mm-hmm. just what it is. And that's it. The end. Yeah. The end. And that's how we're wrapping up this episode. <laughs> yeah. Cool and then the, well, then the podcast <laughs> is over. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. What a great episode. Which we have him leave an emoji. Let's do it! I think we should. I think we absolutely should. What should we leave? Uh, The popcorn bucket. Ah! Hello. This episode was popcorn. This is popcorn. This episode is popcorn. If you guys have survived to the end of this episode, leave a popcorn bucket emoji so we know that you're a real ass bitch. And don't forget, I'll try to link my outfit in the description. You guys are enjoying that. Me too. No, I'm not. (laughs) I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> uh, no, I'm really. I don't think so. This, no, uh, Teddy Fresh though. <laughs> That's all I got. All uh, right, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye, you guys. Bye, guys. Bye.